Hey everyone, welcome to the Dalable Podcast. This is going to be episode 97. Of course, I had talked about the fact that this was going to be us talking about the last half of X-Men 97, but we decided that there was a better better way to um, contribute to the X-Men and its legacy by talking about the real X-Men movie, and that is Deadpool and Wolverine. Here is our review of that fantastic movie. So where do we want to take this? Who wants to go first? Um, there's so much to unpack here, uh, and nobody wants to go first. Everybody wants to have that last word. Right. I don't, well, I don't have the last word. I just don't want to be first. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Then all right. Well, let's just well, let's let's crack you again. At least get it going, right? I mean, so I'll, I'll be honest. I was I was worried somewhat going into this because uh, as as I've been on the record consistently, I am so tired of multiverse stuff. Right. I I just the multiverse, all the interconnection crap is so tired and annoying. And this movie immediately jumped in with both feet and said, yeah, it is tired and annoying and stupid and awful. And what are we even doing? And then what was so great about it is that it took all of that lampooned all of it and then immediately turned around and told a really good story about an interconnected universe that didn't even really wasn't even really necessarily interconnected. Right. By lacing together all of the the old Fox and and Sony, you know, movie or not Sony, all the Fox universe, and throwing that together, and and giving all this love and support to all these characters that shit, man, I hadn't thought of in forever. I was like, wow, that this is wild. I mean, just it and when 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 Johnny Storm showed up, and I thought, oh wow, oh oh oh, yes, oh I get yeah. it. I, it's it all of a sudden it all snapped together. I'm like. I know the characters we're going to see in this now. This has nothing to do with the MCU. It has everything to do with the dead universe. That's great. 100% on board. This is fantastic. And then, you know, Wesley Snipes comes back and kills it, and he is the one and only and will forever be the only only Blade blade. because that other movie is never getting off the ground at this rate. Uh, You know, I think Jennifer Garner was the biggest surprise. I'm like seeing her show up as a lecturer. I was like, that's wild. And then, I mean, it, it's it's making the rounds on the internet, right? Or it's been ever since the movie came out. But Channing Tatum absolutely killed it as Gambit. Like, I want to see a whole movie of him. Just just Chan. I I I'm not a Channing Tatum person, but <laughs> like, dude, if if you want to throw him in a movie as Gambit and have him running around talking, uh, just put subtitles down, please, so I can. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of with Deadpool of. You know, I was listening to him talk, and I was like, "I need you to run that back just one more time." I don't, I don't think I quite caught that. But that's part but, of the yeah. magic. That is definitely part of the magic of that scene because he's like giving commentary on what he's saying. And it's like, who is your dialect coach? The minions? <laughs> <laughs> don't go into the uh, Louisiana in certain quarters because you'll be going. What country am I in? What 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 are you saying? You yeah, don't even I sound like you're talking people. French. Uh, now, strangely enough, I understood about ninety yeah. percent of what he was saying, because uh, I, I, I'm used to being hearing the Louisiana dialect and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of friends from there, and oh, yeah, I, I was, was able to follow that. most of it, but that, well, some of it was just gibberish, li- literally just for the sake of being gibberish. And I read a, a story this morning about Daphne Keene was saying that there were so many retakes and outtakes. Because he was just going off doing his thing and everybody was laughing so hard because of the way he was just, he was getting into the role. And I could see that as I was watching it go along. This has been his dream role since yeah, um, way back in the day and, and Fox really screwed him over. Yeah. And I like the way um, that they referenced that. Yeah. So. It was all self-effacing. It was great. The what was funny is recently we saw a video of him reading a book that I used to read to my yep. children every Christmas. And I was like, I did a better job than you did. <laughs> but I'm joking. Um it is if you haven't read it, it is a Cajun Night Before Christmas. <laughs> when all true when all true to house did not a ting dunster, not even the double mouse. <laughs> so um yeah, I I, I, I enjoyed it. I was glad that he got his due. Yes, and he ate up every scene he was in. Yeah, every I mean the chorego- uh, the choreography. I'm not, I can't even say it. Choreography. Choreography. Yeah, I can't say nothing tonight. Anyway, um, just like put subtitles on you. 
Yes, I do. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm going into my Cajun roots, even though I don't even have Cajun roots other than my half of my blood from my dad. Anyway, uh, he was born of it. Maybe yeah, I was maybe. born of it, but I never I wasn't born there. I was born here in in, in Texas, so I saw. Okay, I'm uh, just have a, a southern little, accent. Little story. I came from <laughs> Louisiana, right, where my grandmother spoke to me in French, and struck and then would talk to us in English. I had family members who were straight up Cajun, and you'd be looking at them, and all you'd see is their lips moving because you couldn't understand a word coming out of their mouth. And I came to San Antonio. As a little, I think I was six, maybe seven years old. And some of my uh, first friends uh, were Hispanic kids. And it was probably the first time ever that a Hispanic kid told somebody else, I don't understand what you're saying. You know, what language are you speaking? And his mom slapped him. Shut up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. actually put me in a speech class. <laughs> Yeah, I was just telling somebody that about that today. But um but no, nah, um just the fight scenes alone were great. Uh just the there was so many easter eggs. Like I want to go see it again to see what I missed. Like the final scene like with all the deadpools and everything. Like there's so much wordplay on everything that like life filled only feet. See, I was glad that was front and center, right? Yes. Like you, you cannot miss that whatsoever. It's yeah. emblazoned above them almost that whole fight scene. I was like, yes. After great. they destroy everybody in the bus, and it's like on the back, there's a thing that advertisement for a bloody soup or something like that. And uh, but yeah, there was tons of it. There was tons of little bitty Easter eggs here and there. There was things that me and Dad were talking about of like ships and other items that were from different comic book related stuff yeah buildings yeah. yeah um fantastic car yeah yes did a real good job of keeping in, that out of everything i saw in red skull and, yeah the red, the red skull, skull car with iron did. man's emblem on the, on the yeah on, on the on front mm -hmm. yeah but the fantastic car they because they showed the, the the red skulls car and they had close-ups of the so i knew that was there and i you know you can see all the other stuff but the one thing they somehow managed to keep quiet was the fantastic car was one of the lead cars and i saw that and i was genuinely surprised even though i knew all the cameos and everything i was like that's very cool I, you know i stayed away from spoilers this time i, I did, did not want to be and i, I had I so many people calling me have you seen this yet i want to talk about it. and I, what have you seen on on, on commercials or, or, or stuff you see that stuff all the time we can talk about that i, I said i haven't i want this to be Yes. When I, I go in the theater, it is fresh for me. I don't want it to be ruined in any way. And it wasn't. I was telling Vince when I was I walked in, I sat in the theater. I was the only one in the theater, right? And I was like, man, this is spooky. I've seen horror movies like this. I kept looking back behind me to see if a vampire family had moved in and they were just going to use me as their snack. No, 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 no. Um, the best one, the best one would have been dead. The, the blob. Whoop. Oh, no, up. no, no. The, there was one movie that uh, I can't remember. It was a B-horror movie back in the late 70s, maybe early 80s. And it was this girl. No, it's a guy. He gets an argument with these people. They come to this town where everybody's turning slowly into zombies. And he's like watching this movie. And then they, they do the him watching the movie. Then it cuts to facing him as the zombies start filling up all the rows behind him and he doesn't know they're there until all of a sudden he looks and there's like on the rows next to him he's just surrounded by zombies even on the row he's on and he's like how did y'all and then they jump on him and they eat him i was like <laughs> there were some stealthy zombies man so there was a lot of love and care and okay i want to i want to specify hey guys um, if you haven't seen this movie, I apologize. Maybe come back until you've seen the movie and want to watch this. I should have probably said this at the beginning, but I mean, it's going to be what three three weeks after, maybe four weeks after the this movie's already been out. When this is going to go up, chances are you've seen more and just random social media. Yes, that is true. Now. That I is know. true. Uh, it's really hard not to see stuff. Just the memes I'm alone from Gambit. 
there yeah, was waiting to see if tomorrow today they where, break 100, uh, yeah, 1 billion. billion. So. There was a meme so somebody released tomorrow. today. It took all of Chris Evans and dialogue there at the end while they're in the cage. They put it all on the picture of him. It was <laughs> that was that was great. That was a great way to end it. But I mean, I yeah, do. I I did have a problem with one thing throughout all of it. I didn't think Pyro was that powerful a mutant. Pyro has always been a, a, a powerful mutant. They used yeah, to know what to not, do with him in the X Men movies. Okay, yeah, but not power, powerful enough to what he did to Johnny. Yeah, he could absorb. No. He, I know, no, Pyro, is, Pyro could not absorb fire. Right. He Pyro could redirect it. A, he manipulate he it. could redirect it and manipulate it. He had to have some source to create it. So when he absorbed everything, you, you got to wonder, okay, did... Um, what's your name? Nova. Uh, Xavier's, Xavier's sister. Cassandra Nova. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Nova. Changed him in any way. You know, Because basically she's like God there. Yeah, and so um, was she acting through it because he was like the number two guy. Yeah. Because Johnny is like, yeah, he can go. He didn't Nova. go. He didn't. He did not go Nova. That right. was the one thing he didn't do. I know. He could. I, I doubt he. I doubt even Pyro could have handled Johnny and his Nova power. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Johnny has so much more potential, but he got it all sucked out of him, and then I was just, I don't know. That was the one thing I took issue with. And I how get they that. It afterward was funny. Yeah. But... I, well, because like the fact that like when they do the whole thing at the end credits, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make sure you guys understand what really happened and stuff. And he shows the footage and There's been a lot of slander going around. And but it's and like you... that would have been Johnny. Johnny would have been freaking bad mouthing uh, Cassandra a hundred percent. Well, what was funny was Deadpool is who gave her the idea to rip. Johnny's flesh yes. off of him because mm -hmm. he goes, "Don't be doing this to me." No, she turned around and it did it to Johnny. You know, I was like, "Man, that's some cold-blooded stuff." Right. Like, uh, what, uh, what's his name? Uh, pretty gruesome. Wade Wilson. <laughs> Logan's like, "You asshole! You just got him killed." Killed. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'll say there were an F bomb count. <laughs> I gotta go back and find it, but somebody did an F bomb count. Yeah, it's oh yeah, there's an F. It's 118. Yeah, I, I posted yeah, a they meme said about that. that in all of Marvel's uh, movies, there's only been 119 f bombs, and 118 of them were in this movie. Even this movie. <laughs> um. Yeah, because the meme that I saw was Guardians of the Galaxy one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing. I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. So, I just, for me. I was more after the movie was done, and I really didn't have any complaints. I couldn't say anything. I talked to everybody who wanted to talk to me about it, and uh, I, I really loved it. And then I started thinking about the plot holes, the, all the plot holes and stuff, the, the the hoops that they jumped through to try to make this some one coherent film. They they kind of stand out after the fact, which is a good thing. That shows you how good this movie is. You don't notice. Right. The flaws and the holes and the problems. You're just right. having a good time, mm -hmm. you know, sitting yeah. here and enjoying it. Yeah, suspension of disbelief kicked in. And really that's, right. And that's one of the good things about when you went and saw this. It was better seeing it with a crowd than by yourself because you want the fan reaction as you're watching it. It helps with the engagement because that's what we noticed when me and Rob went to go see it. Um, Versus like when dad went and saw it, you know, he only had a small group of people, but he still enjoyed the film because, yeah. you know, you're a fan. But at the last minute, I was like, wow, OK, I'm going to this is a private showing just for moi. And all of a sudden, this one older dude came in and he set off behind me up to my right. And then this family, this father comes in with three kids, two of them are teenagers. I'm like, OK, they're OK. And then this had to be 12 year old kid. And I was like. That's going to be a problem later. <laughs> I actually yeah, 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 yeah. back there. I had I had a friend who I had talked about taking the kids to to see this, and he's like, "You let them watch Deadpool." I was like, "Well, I'll let them watch the second one." Yeah, we're taking them, to, but the Once Upon a Deadpool one, right? The PG thirteen iteration right. that lampoons the Princess Bride framing and all the rest of that. Yeah. Right? He's like, "I'll take them to that and I'll take them to this." He's like, "Oh, okay." And then on Monday, I found out he promised his kids that he was going to show them all 
three of the Deadpool movies, and I was like, oh man, um, uh, that that first one, uh, there's there's some stuff that you might not want yeah. your kids to see. But- so I really quickly like watched. Like, I sped. I, I I I sped through the first one really quick. Made some notations. Like, hey man, uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want your kids to have the birds and the bees talk at this point, you might want to <laughs> skip minutes. You know, twenty four to twenty six. And if you yeah, don't want to, you don't want them to see strippers for the first time, and you want to have a little time to explain exactly what that is. You know, you might want to skip minutes. You know, one hour and three to this and that. And so. Ran it through real quick, and he showed it to his kids, and he skipped those parts. And I'm like, "Might as well just you're braver man throw, than me, man." Go throw the Kama Sutra at your kids and go, "Hey, go read this." <laughs> right. I did like in the uh, outside the apartment thing <laughs> how they managed to edit together for the trailer and make it look nice and innocent and stuff like that. <laughs> We're gonna make crazy eye contact. You, I can't see your eyes, but I know what you're seeing and I know what you're thinking. And I'm you. all for it. Man, I yeah, hate I'm you. That's the attitude we're going to keep that. And we're going to look at each other. Well, that whole, the whole uh, opening scene, I mean, like him defiling Wolverine's Yeah. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Just, as as now, great as that scene was, I think my, my favorite fight scene from the entire movie was the one in the van. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. That, that, that's that what I told you. That's what I was that, that, is, that, that was the greatest fight ever, man. That was so uh, good. It just, the way they ended it up, that was great. Yeah, with him wrapped up in the seatbelts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Um the uh just like this, even the fight scene at the end though. I mean, like getting to see Wolverine finally wearing the mask. <laughs> and then them just doing with, the with the white eyes. Yes. Not just the mask, they gave Correct. him the white, white eyes. eyes. Yes. yes. And him just doing these poses as he's like attacking each one. Oh yeah, it, he 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 mimicked. I mean, they made sure they got several yeah. well, classic Wolverine jumps and 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 poses in there. I mean, that, that like I told you, I was like just the the throwbacks to covers in yeah. this film was like oh man i know what that's from i know what that's from and i was just naming off the covers you know as i was watching it um one of the fight scenes the first fight scene when they're in the void when wolverine went down low was on all hands and feet and coming at him all feral that was awesome mm-hmm. i immediately was like okay he's done his homework this time well, and, just any of those scenes with like the the cameo versions of Wolverine were fantastic. Even the even the, the, four, the four, comic, four, yeah, the comic accurate, accurate version. <laughs> yeah, he was just he was, <laughs> but he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't even comic accurate. He was like puck accurate. He was, yeah, he, he was, was like the size of puck from Alpha Flight. He was a little yes. smaller than he's he a little too. He's a little too short. A little, just Although a little I will say. I, I am I am definitely on board with with Cavill. If, if yeah, he, yeah, and you know that there's the a whole yeah, there's a whole Kevin movement Feige. now to get him to play the next Wolverine. Yeah, Kevin Feige even said Wolverine is not going to be recast, and he didn't say it was going to be Hugh Jackman. Jackman, yeah, correct. He did. yeah, he said he's not going to be recast. Yeah. Now there were only a couple of Wolverines in there, so I and. I, I think I think the thing that I liked also about Cavill's turn was he did his patented arm reload to to shoot out the claws as claws, he went yeah. forward. Yeah. So like so we we have that if if that if that's what they go with if Feige is is true to his word and they don't recast Wolverine and they stick with Henry Cavill I look forward to arm reload claws constantly. It's Do you know how big Cavill is? Yes. How oh, tall yes. and I, massive I watched, he is. I watched a few movies of him. Uh, yeah, in and so yeah. I would like them to get somebody not who Superman is related, not, though. not you know, I, it, he's even taller than Hugh Jackman. Yeah, they, I've seen him standing next to each other, and I'm like, okay, instead of going smaller, more stocky, and more Wolverine, mm-hmm. like, no, we're gonna go no. higher, we're gonna go taller. That's right. No, I mean, look, Ca- Cavill's broad, okay, you can make up with, and and we learned a lot of tricks from you know Peter Jackson from back yep. in the day, right? What, you can what do and all that, yeah, well, they did that. In the very first X Men movie, they shrunk him. 
they yeah. digitally made him smaller for the scenes because Holly Berry is tiny and they were standing next to each other the same size. So uh, I was like, wow, they really took some height off of him. And then they gave up <laughs> after that. Yeah, they were like, yeah. the hell with it. It's too expensive. Nobody notices. Yeah. Well, you got to see your tan and brown, Dad. Finally. Oh, man. I was like, I need that picture on my wall. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. The only thing I wanted was the mask, him to wear the mask. For and that. have it to be the actual uh, when he, yeah, that flare out. Super what flare out. I wanted him to go <laughs> blow pull it, just, to, just to pull it down over his face and bare his teeth and go, and then have that. Oh, man, that would have been great. Because that Deadpool, made him look samurai. Yeah. yeah. When Deadpool turned around and Hulk was right there. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm Marvel Jesus, and you can't <laughs> smack me, bam. I'm Marvel Jesus. <laughs> I mean, there's so many great one-liners in this film. I mean, just like, even the whole thing, but the cool cameo was like, I thought, and it was just a one-off comment, was the fact that like, he was like, where did you get the bazooka from? And he's like, which Punisher? And it's the 89, yeah. and the, uh, Dolph Lundgren Punisher Dolph they talk about. Punisher. I'm like, yeah. Dude, like that would have been amazing having Dolph Lundgren come back just to. And they just... talked about having several Punishers come through, which means that talks about Dolph Lundgren, Thomas Jane's. Thomas Jane and, 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 and uh, uh, John Bernthal. No, 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 no. He's no, still well, because uh, Warzone. 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 Yeah, but uh, Ray Stevenson. Ray, Ray Stevenson. Yeah. yeah, but he would have. I mean, I think he was already. Was he alive when never? I don't know when they were filming that. No, I think I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Ray's, but Ray, Ray's, yeah, Ray died well, right after they finished the star. Uh, yeah, wasn't yeah. that okay. died. It was the No, it just yeah, because it, it wouldn't have been him, but John Bernthal could have showed up. But I know he's supposed to be part of the whole new. So he's he's going to be. They've already yeah, he's new. Yeah, also, he's a new Punisher for the new and year. There's also so. talking about a new Punisher series coming. So mm. D23 is going on right now, so who knows what's going to get talked about? Yeah. Um. I have been I have been kind of curious seeing all the people uh, complaining about not being able to cameo on it, right? Like Kevin Nash was complaining about him not being the Russian again yeah, in this right. one, which is fine. Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, C- Cable not being in this one, right? Like Cobra's recast. Oh uh, well, yeah. Vinny Jones uh, said Vinnie he would have loved yeah. to done. He would have loved to have come back, but he didn't want to be back in that costume. Yeah, um, yeah. because he, it was, and so he was awesome. also he also talked about. Getting having to get into that kind of shape again, yeah, which yeah, would have been he's... better if they would have like you could have like made accurate version of him, but have Vinnie Jones' face underneath there. They could have done what they did with Juggernaut in the yeah. second one. I mean, yeah, yeah, but that's not that's not the that's not the Juggernaut we were dealing with, right? You got no, have no, his helmet Juggernaut. Yeah, that's the one you got to have. His helmet, yes. Um, what else? You got uh, I think even what Psylocke was in it. I think yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. L- Olivia M- Olivia Munn was in it. Boy, yeah. she, I was like, that's her, but she she's aged a little bit. Poor, poor Ray still... Parks. Ray Parks, oh, man, Ray Park. he is filming uh, some movie where he's doing all the stunt work in it, but he's not getting to do any of the voiceover. And I was like, so in this other movie, it's going to be him. He's going to get credit for playing the person, but they dub his voice, and in this. He doesn't even get to have a voice. You know, it's not even like, him. It wasn't him. I thought it was him. It's not Ray Park. No. Nope. Oh. Recast. I Could have swore some on the credits. Unless they slipped a sneaky sneak in there. Because I had read that I had read who got recast. Mm. You know, the Russian got recast. Yeah, uh, the Russian uh, from the uh, Thomas from Sheen. the Punisher movie. Uh, yeah, that's definitely that that's definitely a missed opportunity. Oh, I mean, it's just as bad as Terminator Genesis and having not having uh, them just take the footage from the first movie. And they got these other guys that look nothing like Bill Paxton and uh, what's his name? I can't remember the one from uh, who played Shao Kahn and that was all a big villain in a lot of 80s movies. Oh, yeah, the blonde dude. I, I know, you, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's it, it's the curse of, of some character actors, right? Of just being like. I can name every role the guy's ever been in, but I, for the life of me, I can't think of can't his, remember his name. name. Yeah, it it's was like, uh, it was it was uh, Lady Deathstrike was who we were thinking. Yes, she, it's not Psylocke. Yes, she got recast too. 
But no, Psylocke was in there. Yeah, Psylocke was in there. She, she pulled the uh, X-23 down from the When she's up on top, when she's bringing up the helmet. Yes. I was trying to find that her. That was, was Psylocke who brought her down. Oh, man. I did, did anybody notice Shatterstar? Yes. Yeah. I didn't. He no he uh, so Shatterstar that because he was the X Force guy right the alien that died in two and Deadpool two yeah yeah he yeah. was one of the ones he that was died. he was hanging he was the hanging around gravity. huh the cops said gravity yeah but no he 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 was back I guess because of all the the time changes that Deadpool made to the to the timeline mm-hmm. yeah in in Deadpool's world whenever he was hanging out doing his birthday and all that Shatterstar was there. And if anything, that that if I had anything to say about the movie, the I, and I understand, you know, it would have been four hours long, but it says Ray yeah. Parks was in it as Toad. Okay. Really? I thought it was him too, uh, but I didn't look at the credits. So, um, um, but, but one one but, thing is you got to understand is that they changed two things to help make this film. One, they changed uh, Cable. Um, what is his name? Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin's Brolin. character, Cable. His time watch only went through time. It was not a dimensional travel oh, Lord, device. Lord, Lord. Yes. So they never explain, and I think they do, because I vaguely remember him asking the one of the people, X-Men to help fix it, and she did yes. fix it. It was the one that she it was, threw it, it was to ne- him. It was Negasonic. Negasonic. And she threw it to him. So, And that is where he started jumping through multiverses, like killing that himself as an actor going yeah. and doing all the, the stuff. I mean, I mean, and then the because that would have or... been the only way that he could have gone and met happy Hogan because right. they are not in the same universe. No, no, no. That's why they said it was six one six at the time, at the beginning, whenever yeah. he was doing the interview. Uh, and so his time jumping and dimensional jumping, he caused because, you know, in the Marvel universe, every, and if you believe in the multiverse, Every decision spawns a new world. New yeah. world, and so him going and tinkering and messing with things created all new streams, all new universes. You well, know? you 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 got to think about the fact that he may have been the person that created the six one six universe by manipulating things like he did, which goes to the whole thing about him being uh, Marvel Jesus. Um. So, but. I don't know. There's. I mean, he certainly knows all the major players from the early Avengers. Yeah. yeah. And there was an attempt to have the six of them come back for a reunion. And remember, Robert remember Downey this... had already been cast as Doctor Doom, and they Dr. said Doom. no, he's off limits. Well, I I read that they told nobody from the Avengers was going to come into this at all. The the whole scene with Thor was a blend of him with Loki and them and then Deadpool. For in the position that Loki yeah, replaced from this, yeah. dark the from the dark universe that because of the th- things that they're doing with the the new Avengers movies and everything else they don't want those characters touched or modified in any way um and now that the uh what are the which brothers uh I can't remember Russo. Their name. Russo. Russo, Russo, brothers. Russo brothers are in it's going to be shut down we won't see anything but what is important that is going to be in their films from going forward. Um, but the, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. I do that a lot now that I'm old. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in here because people won't hear, uh, people will see the image before it'll actually appear in the episode, but I'm thinking about having, maybe I'll get um, one of our buddies who does art, uh, either Chris or zip, to maybe do like a thing where we'll have like the X-Men 97 logo, but then there's a claw slash through it and Deadpool's kind of looking through the thing. That'd be, that'd be kind of a cool little thumbnail for this. So I'll have to, I have to start that process. But there were, I, I don't know how, from what I've understand is there were no Avengers in the X-Men universe. Uh, the one that, that Deadpool and most of these characters came from. Right. But the, um, but the one from Wolverine where he destroyed the X Men, there was uh, an, a, Avengers. A, an Avengers, and so he knew who the Avengers were. Correct. But um, 
in his and, and of course they're they're saying now Deadpool see because he can break the fourth wall it's his mutant power um, because his healing power is basically was given to him um, so his mutant power is to be able to break the fourth wall and see through dimensional walls so he sees all the universes so I mean I mean that kind of would kind of explain to him he's batshit crazy because if you were constantly remembering multiple uh, versions Various of reality. Of yeah. It would drive you mad. While dealing with your own real crap that's going on in your life that you can't change or you try to anyway. Um, it was it was cool to get to see, uh, you know, Colossus for couple scenes you know oh yeah right. that was that was the thing i was gonna say was if if there was one thing that i kind of wished and again it would i understand it would have made the movie like four hours long but we didn't really get a lot of time with the people that brought us here right like you, we didn't get a lot of hangout time with all of the deadpool team deadpool from the first two movies like you know we get a little bit in the beginning setting up the birthday all this stuff we get the little bit at the end that's great it's like i I, 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 I love the movie is the way they put it together. It would have been nice to have a little bit more of, of those folks, right? Maybe just seeing a little bit more adventuring with Deadpool with, with them. But but yeah, it was like seeing seeing one more Colossus fight would have been pretty dope. But like have maybe have them show up and help fight off the, the Deadpool. Like him go back but... and grab Colossus so we need you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, see, the... I would love that where Colossus is like walking having yeah, like, like in a towel oh, around him. He's day. like in the refrigerator looking for something yeah. to eat and all of a sudden he goes, we need you. And he pulls him and the towel drops and you see him go <laughs> off and then Deadpool the... sticks his head and goes, ooh. You know, <laughs> that, man, that would die, man. But then you could have... But, but, then, but then the whole movie you would have had Colossus fighting with a big blur, right? Blur, yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, yes. But, and then Deadpool going, I thought this was R. Yeah, or, it's R. Wait, yeah. Would you not show penis in R? Right. <laughs> hey, Watchmen got away with it. Yes. Why can't we? Right? Like he could throw stuff out like that. Or or just have it be where like Colossus the whole time is like uh like the old Austin Powers gags, right? Where it's just everything kind of gets in strategically frame. placed uh, things in the yeah. Yeah. It would have been great. I, and and again, uh, I get I, I get it. They I, what they did was great. It's just one of those things where it's like, man. I, it was just it. I, I'm I'm being I'm being greedy right now at this point, you right? It's like, more, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but, I mean, that's, I mean, that's had, the great uh... thing about this is like, man, I don't remember the last time I walked out of one of these movies. It was like, God, man, I, I, I hope they do another one. I, I, honest to God, I want to see more of this. It's like it's it's been a hot minute yeah. since we've come out of something with this with this kind of energy behind it. Right. It's been it's been a minute. It, it, it's one of those films that like you. You feel that nostalgia, and it, it, it's something new that you crave because it goes and harkens back to what we enjoy about film and cinema. Well, uh, and it's, you just you just see all of the passion that the yes. people involved in this had for. I mean, like what we're like what we're talking about, right? The fight scenes are amazing. All the references are amazing. All the little touches. It's like clearly Ryan Reynolds, the uh, the the team that he assembled around this has just so much love and and passion and and stuff for these characters for and not just the the characters for the comic but clearly the entire history of this this cinematic universe right of of these well, stories movie. that were being told because that's what was so i mean even down to the credits right seeing these behind the scenes little vignettes of mm -hmm. you know them messing around in the first x-men movie and playing around behind the scenes for uh what fantastic four all this stuff you you just see this love of oh yeah the, I mean, all of that seeing... stuff put on on all over the screen and mm -hmm. it just it incur it doesn't feel like just corporate you know sludge being shoved down your gullet and it just it it, it brings you back to that just energizing of man these guys get it. This is this was great. It, yeah, there's plot holes. There's stuff in it that you know probably could have been a little bit better or adjusted here and there. But like what we've talked about before, man. Like so many sins are can be forgiven if you are just entertain. If you're just fun. If I I can ignore so much if I'm invested in what's going on yeah. and from jump just invested in this. It was so much fun. Well, and like the fact that we had a what. 
two minute scene where he's getting dressed and it, the, the, the crotch grabbing this ass slapping well, over, 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 yeah, yeah, over, over and over again. Yeah, it's like, you're, your guy, and, the, a, and, and it wasn't it wasn't just that it was, it was, the, the, it was <laughs> the sound effects yeah. the, the scream uh, and you know and then hearing lots of ass slapping. i mean yes. i was dying man i was like that yeah, is think, that was like a poke at the old bat remember when bat boy well, batman yeah. it was also yeah. a poke it was like always like a little bit with him the getting the new suit butt shot and the nipples on the suit and all that that's yeah. what this was and then the, the the tailor you know he's like got that yeah he's got that curl the playful grin on yeah. his face yeah uh, he comes out he says you're t- there's a predator yeah. <laughs> um uh, uh, man just uh it, this but there was to be uh, bits. Uh, i have to agree with what david said a lot of this i mean this was what we've been waiting for. This is what we right. wanted. And I hope Disney wakes up and takes a look at it because this is going to be a billion dollar movie, probably more than that. And Disney wanted to get involved. Disney was trying to do their stuff in Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and all the people involved stood their ground. And this is what we've always said. When you get people who are passionate about what they're making and understand the material and yep. are loyal to it, they can do a little bit changes here and there to modernize it or whatever. But if it doesn't have its heart, it, it you it's you, people just you know, you know what heart. And this had this was Deadpool. I've all loved all three Deadpool movies, but Deadpool went, hey, let me just bring all the rest of my Fox people in here and let them all sell it because this was a swan song for fox that right they didn't get you know this was a this was a goodbye to the old hello to the new new last yeah. hurrah but uh, but him him giving shit to fox in the beginning i'm going to disney world i'm going to disney world yeah yeah <laughs> next the camera and grabs a microphone that was great. what's the line the, uh, Dis- he was bought by disney and now they're going to make him play the same role for until he's oh, yeah. ninety. Well, Fox 90, killed yeah, him, but Disney back, brought him back, and they're going to make him do it till he's ninety. 90. I Man, I was yeah. dying. There was so much. Well, and that was, and, was cool too. The whole like getting to see old man Logan as he was drawn versus John, yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> when his claw didn't come all the way out. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh god. See, I can see it in my head, in my in my mind right now. I'm seeing it the movie again. But you got how good it was. You gotta understand. I was literally like, I saw this opening night with Rob, and we sat in his living room just chatting and just talking about this movie. But he was the only one I could talk to because none of you guys had seen it yet. I'm like, damn it, hurry up and see this. I was like, Colin, I'll pay for you to go see this so we can go see, so we can talk about it. Um I want to go see it again. There's so yeah. much stuff that I missed that because I was laughing, I was just like in the moment of the film. And that's what's great about a good story and uh, good content that doesn't draw you out, like something that's forced into something that doesn't fit. And that's well, I'm what just, Disney's been doing lately, and that's why they've been failing. So this was something totally different and what I'm they needed. just glad they cut the dog deep throating him um, out. Uh, I mean, I would have, bleh, you know, I mean, Hey, there's a scene that's out there. You can find it. They had it on Kimmel when the, uh, both him and uh, uh, Hugh Jackman were hosting it for the week. And man, I was, and then watching Hugh Jackman have to have this serious Wolverine look on his face. And this dog is like shooting. It's like an alien. It's tongue down. Ryan Reynolds is, throat he's like ah. and then when the guy goes cut he just and he walks off the screen busting up laughing and he goes no no come on tell us what how that felt for you. he goes oh i don't know how many of you have ever tasted salmon pate and we tried different things to see what this dog would like and would react to and we found that he really enjoys salmon pate. So he goes, so they would come in and swab my mouth with this and then roll and then we'd go with it. 
and I was like, <laughs> that dog was really just that. Ah, so ah. the the, well, the funniest <laughs> part of that whole thing was like when uh, he Brian Reynolds turns and goes, ah, 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 and starts looking at himself. Becky yeah. the dog. Becky yeah. uh, the dog. Just. Oh, and man. then all the the cameos of the in, of the Deadpool army, yeah, all those different people and 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 the some in that fight scene on the bus, like the up, lead up, you have to watch each and every one because they're all doing something funny, and something that is is in their line of characters from the comics. And that bus driver, when Wolverine comes in and kills, uh, Deadpool is already moving. Wolverine comes in and kills somebody that he. Uh, he the big tubby bus driver who looks like Ralph Cramden in a Deadpool suit goes, Oh my, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, Oh, and then he got hit in the back of the head and then just all that fighting in the bus, the choreographing in this must yeah. have been a nightmare. Yeah, there's lots of blood and then there's bullet holes shattering the glass. Uh, I did like the fact that kid pool was played by his daughter, by Ryan's daughter. Because they wanted to get the kid who was in that movie with him that we we all watched there. Yeah. Uh, Imagine or what? Yeah, which Adam, one? Adam, the kid. Oh, Adam, Adam. Adam. Yeah. Okay. He thing is, they went to grab him and they said, "Oh my God, we can't use him. He's too tall now." Because the kid grew like three and a half feet in the interim. And Ryan said, "Oh my God, we want to use you, but we can't. You're too big." So they had to use his daughter as kid pool. Yeah, and then I think the baby was their other other kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Matthew McConaughey yeah, and Nathan Fillion is yeah, head Nathan pull. Fillion was yeah. Uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey was the cowboy one. Was the yeah, cowboy yeah. one? Yeah, that was great. I was sitting there as in, the, in the credits, just trying to see who everybody was because it was going by so fast. fast yeah. And at the same time, I'm <laughs> look at the the gag stuff that's going on. I'm like, stop it! Show one or the other, but you this is killing me. You know, so. One of the things that does need to be talked about about this film, this film has an amazing soundtrack. Yes. And every, it's well crafted for the scenes. Like, I mean, even just the whole in sync thing at the beginning, which is a playoff of the, I think, the what, the second movie when like, I tried to get Celine Dion to come in and she's like, oh, good luck getting in uh, sync or whatever. And of course, it pays off because the in sync was the song at the beginning but it was cool getting to see the guy that played deadpool doing all the dancing choreography yes for that. and then seeing his reaction whenever he got to see it yeah watching the green screen stuff was cool because yeah. julie and i watched that last night she goes well what's this about i said i honestly don't know i mm -hmm. know that he dances to and sing at some point but that's all i knew and then you know we got to see little bits and pieces of it and then we got to see the payoff this morning and i'm like okay that's really cool Oh, and there's a K-pop band, which is my uh, Alice's favorite, who did a video with both Hugh Jackman and him because the music was supposed to be in the film, and it ends up being the music in the uh, in part of the credits. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and, that's the song at the end there. Possibly. And so she was I'm like, sorry. "So was it? How was it? Was it? Was it all through the movie?" And I was like, "Honey, it wasn't until in the credit." And she, blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will say this: the the big action scene where after they blew their way through Paul Rudd's hands, or or actually it's Ant Man's hands, and then they started fighting. I don't know what was going on, but while while the fighting and all the moving was going on, I'd seen a little clips of it where it was clear, but it wasn't clear. It was blurry. It was jumping around. I didn't know if something was going on with the camera or what. Hmm, but it was I didn't crazy. see. It. I saw. I, I saw that it. there was a lot of debris and smoke. It was, really but I didn't really see it digital, digi digitized. Uh -huh. I don't know. It was really hard to follow because you were for a while you're following Jennifer Garner, and I'm like, it, it, it's shaky and blurry, and I'm like, something's weird here. It may have been something uh, wrong with the the yeah, film because we didn't have it. It had to be on your on, on the side of that because yeah. I don't remember it being that that blurry mm -hmm. I, I know there i mean there's a lot going on right there's just right. like and i expected that stuff going it, everywhere and all that but i don't remember specifically it getting blurry or, or shaky or anything like any more than you know right other than what like you that would expect, would this have was, i mean i was like wait but because i'm sitting there you know you know i'm doing homework while i'm trying to enjoy a movie which kind of sucked 
So I'm watching just so jump around. It looks blurry. And I... Hold on, Colin. Wait till he. Uh... I'm gonna yeah. have to second, cut this part out. Zero stars. Yeah, zero stars. I'm gonna have to add this out, Dad. There he goes. He's muted now. Go ahead. But, I mean, so I'm sitting there trying to enjoy the movie throughout the whole thing, but doing homework on it. So my brain is like splitting in half. But I'm like, okay, let's watch her fight. Who is she going after? Yeah, mm -hmm. there were a lot of random goons and stuff like that. And there was a lot of TVA guys over X amount of time who got bamfed into it. So I'm wondering if some of them were, you know, okay, you're, you know, Cassandra said, okay, you're at least fightable. I can keep you here if you want to keep alive. You know, I'm, and I'm looking for that shadow star. I'm looking for the toad. I'm looking for who are these characters who I know are in there. But everything was just so shaky and blurry for like two minutes. It ruined it. Yeah, and you you're probably later on it, it was fine. Yeah. Um. The there's some things I want to talk about. But I'm gonna wait till Dad gets back because I do want to talk about the implementation of what's going to change with Marvel with this film because technically this isn't a new catalyst to change everything that they're going to do. Um, especially considering the fact that like is Tony Stark, the character of, you know, the, Doom. the main, huh? Doom. They, they said he's doomed from another universe. No, 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 no. But the, 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 when Tony Stark died in the 616 universe was he's the anchor character. Oh yeah. And then I mean, maybe that's the reason why things are starting to to change the way they were. And they can use that as a way to kind of retcon stuff because of the fact that without Tony, because he was that anchor, things just started to deteriorate. Okay, yeah. But if you think about it, Cap was. I think Cap is the anchor for six one six because he was there first. If you he go might back, have been there you know, first, but uh, you, you got it. So, I mean, you got you got to think about it in in terms and, of I, I I think about it more of like a meta sense, right? Of the Fox movies really were carried by Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, Wolverine yeah. right? Like that's yes. that's what it became. Yes, that it makes became sense. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. So the second Hugh Jackman's like I'm done as this, all the rest of their stuff became almost unmarketable because they just like struggle with it. Even though like First Class and all that was great, right? Right. Yep. Everyone was still pining for oh more Hugh Jackman, and as, as much as Chris Evans is great in the Marvel movies, RDJ has you know been so much the focal point and and the the center fixture of the Avengers of this stuff because he was the one that started it right. It's it's RDJ, you even know, Fury he's, he's at his peak, right? Uh, hmm? Even Fury told him he wasn't the first. No, right, not the no, first. Yeah, it doesn't no, have to no, be the but, first. But, but in but terms he, of... He was like the most, pre the most prominent, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, well no. Well, I'm but saying in the, terms... Hold on, hold on. Pull, yeah, pull back okay. from thinking of it in-universe, right? Don't okay. think about it in-universe. Think about it, are us looking into that universe. Who is the character that everyone... like uh, that uh, the, ma the majority of the populace in our, in our reality, in our world, that they gravitate to? It's Iron Man, right? Because... It, again, he, he started he, the MCU. He, he, he started the MCU. He wasn't in chrono chronologically in that universe. He wasn't the first, but in our universe, he was the first. And it, it was such a major moment to have him die, stopping Thanos and all the rest of that. Right? Like it all. It wasn't Cap. It wasn't Thor. It wasn't. It was Iron Man. And it also explains. Had. It also explains why the fact that when the snap happened, he didn't disappear. Because if he's the if he's the anchor point in that universe, the universe wouldn't allow the thing that holds like everything is centered around him. He started it. He even though there's other things that maybe happened before him, but he is the focal point for the MCU. Now that he's gone, there's been a void because it's felt in Spider Man because you know he's so lost without having Tony there. And then on top of that, like every movie that we've had other than Guardians has has it been great. Um, even you would think even with the um, the TV shows. So everything kind of went downhill once Tony died. And in a metaphorically speaking yeah. of the uh, of the MCU. But again, it, that's that's in terms of of looking at it from the meta perspective of us us looking watching in. this universe, not in the universe yeah. itself. Even though that's 
kind of what they're playing into right mm-hmm. um but yeah it's it's interesting i guess we'll see where they go with it i guess i guess them defining who the anchor is i mean yeah you make a good argument i will give yeah. you that okay but there was a lot that didn't happen or did happen because Captain America. Yeah. Sure. Well, no, no, but that doesn't that doesn't undermine Cap as a. No, no, I, I don't know. You're right. I get yeah. that. But thing is, it would. I guess I would need clarity because, like I said, you guys make a great point about how the Iron Man movie changed the zeitgeist for Marvel movies, mm-hmm. or or changed. You know, it it changed. It gave him his true second life, his true purpose. The character he was meant to be. Okay. Yeah. I get, I I absolutely agree with that. So mm -hmm. I am curious as to whether or not they'll define who is 616's anchor person. Right. At at the least. I mean, you you could be right. It could be Iron Man. I don't know. But that brings the, the question in is like if a character dies naturally versus, I mean, like, cause. Wolverine sacrificed himself, and because he died, he he, like the the fabric of everything was wiped away. Versus like with Tony, it was even though he sacrificed himself, he still died a hero. Versus what Logan did. So you wonder, could that mantle be passed to somebody else? You know, you'd have to have something within the universe that it's like I'm not going to destroy myself if this focal point doesn't exist. Yeah. Who would be the next person within the lore that would be the person to take up that mantle? Well, and that's and that's where I say it's more of a meta commentary, right? Instead of being specifically in Universe One, because mm-hmm. uh, again, once once Hugh Jackman was gone, like who you know that was the debate forever is who's going to pick up the mantle of Wolverine, and no one ever did, right? Mm-hmm. It still sat with Hugh Jackman. Same thing that goes on there with Tony, right? Okay, well. And, and that's been the big discussion for, for the last couple of years is, is okay, now that the original Avengers are gone, right? Like Thor's going around doing his thing, but Cap and Tony are gone. Yep. So who's going to come in to fill those shoes? Is it going to be Avengers. Captain? Is it going to be Captain Marvel? And that was the big thing. It was, oh, it's going to be Captain Marvel. It's going to be Spider-Man. But all that has been a, a, a big dud so far. So they're like, where do you go, right? What, what do you right. do? And because they, and, and again, this is all like, you know, because I mean that's Deadpool, right? It's it's this weird meta commentary on stuff, and and you and I, you can see it in terms of a in universe thing, but it, I think it's more of, uh, expressing that that outward idea of what's happening in the universe instead. Um, but I guess we'll see. You know what they do with it, where they go with it. If they if we do get a completely open, you know that maybe that's how. They bring in Doom, right? Is trying to say, hey, you know, this Tony's gone, and then oh, here's a new Tony, but he ain't our Tony, right? Which I hope right. they don't do. But well, it's like, I mean, I want it. To, I want it to be Victor, but at the same time, it's like, how can it be Victor if it's if it's Tony? It's, yeah, if it's Tony. <laughs> well, and of course, the fact that these people are going to feel that he's Tony, unless there's something similar to what happened with uh, Peter, where everybody wiped all their memories are wiped. The fact that he's Spider Man. So maybe the fact of people know who Iron Man is, but the the vessel that was Iron Man for us as the viewer is different in that universe <coughs> has changed, and now it's like Deadpool being confused by who Johnny Storm was. Correct. He thought it was an alternate Cap. It was Cap. Yeah. He yeah. didn't. He didn't even catch on that it was. I mean, he didn't know. Apparently, he didn't know about the Fantastic Four at all. Mm-mm. He didn't no. recognize the car. He didn't recognize him as Johnny Storm. He kept saying, okay, he's going to say it. He's going to say it. And Wolverine's like, he's going to say what? And then he goes, flame on it. He goes, oh, never mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it, what was great about this film is it does bring about questions that we need to figure out. I mean, we don't need to figure out, but we can speculate on. And we can speculate yeah. on for a little while uh, of the direction that Foggy is going to take the the series of the films and everything because right. this changes so much but implements so much other things that like change our perspective and understanding of what's come before that we have to wonder how things are going to change what 
you know, this will be them. This will give them a chance to change the universe in a direction that may be more popular to the fans. Uh, and dad, what you missed was we talked about the fact that like, since we know that Wolverine was the focal point for the anchor for the universe of which I disagree with, but the fact that they when they an anchor uh, um, dies that the universe collapses in on itself, but it takes thousands and thousands of years to do um, that. That's one way of explaining why some of them happen. Correct. So what but, we were saying that like if. That's the case. Hold on, hold on, hold be... on, just a second. All right, hold on. This Wolverine jumps over into Deadpool's universe, right, to save it, and he's going to stay there. What happens to his old one? Well, he's not the folk that. Remember, that's not. I think the way it's expressed is that there's a character. It doesn't have to be the same character. It's not like Wolverine across every universe is the focal point. There are no or the anchor. There's other characters that would be the anchor point. And so what was spe I'm speculating is, is, and someone's already mentioned this. So that's why I'm bringing it up is that is Robert Downey Jr. The anchor point for the MCU and the that 6. Would six. Yeah. Correct. And that would be the reason why all the other movies that have come out since Endgame have not been great, except for guardians and uh, no way home. Which is funny because technically those would be the closest in relation to the the old guard, right? Because you you have guardians with uh, I mean I guess Thor wasn't really a whole lot in it, but still you 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 have those those groups that are a little bit more closely tied to that than some of these other movies that have been coming out. So it it leads it lends a little bit of credence to oh hey you you were the closest to the sun and so you still got a little bit of shine left on you as everything starts to fade off, right? Because, because uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the problem was that they bring in Loki. They bring in the whole thing from seasons one and two of Loki. Loki rebuilt the universes, right? It's, so it shouldn't have mattered from that point when he restabilized the universes and reintertwined and created them all over again. He fixed all the problems. So that was one of the things I was like, yeah, they kind of didn't. That's why Loki's not in this very much. And then that diagram that they show doesn't match what was there when Loki fixed everything. So, well, did Loki and because the and because hold on and because and you question. know this happened after that because mm -hmm. the woman who comes down and and takes over everything the black lady yeah she was one of the guard head guards the of. Uh, police yes. officer or whatever in Loki and now she's part of upper management yes. so we know that that is in fact after Loki so I mean again I don't want to get into the woods too much because if you do then you start you can unravel anything it's like a sweater you start pulling one string and the whole thing unravels um, Marvel's already said this will not be the X-Men who we see in the future films they will come back. We will see Deadpool, and we're going to see this Wolverine again. And we're going to see some of these other characters in the two Avengers movies. And then, at the end of that, when everything is reset, Stop we're going to get a whole new universe. The MCU that we know will no longer exist. You know, So you're going to get a reboot of the universe but it's going to be comic style. You know, they, it fell apart. It was all collapsing in on itself. We're going to see multiverses dying. The doom God emperor doom is going to be the villain in the first Avengers movie. And then we have the, the final one with the secret, War. the secret wars. So, mm -hmm. and that's, what's going to relaunch everything. And we're not even going to end up with the fantastic four we have now. You know, this is just to carry us through to win. Uh, and I'm assuming we're going to get younger actors. We're going to get reboots of new people because it's an all new universe. This is for another generation to come in. This is a stepping right. point. So um, I just hopefully we get uh, there was a lot of stuff planned between here and there. And now that's well, gone out of the way. 
David said it. I was I could not wait to see the new uh, Blade, Blade. film. I, I I wanted to see the new Ghost Rider film. That doesn't seem like it's going to go through. The Midnight Suns was written and ready to go, and now what's going to happen with all of that? Um, Nova. Nova. Yeah, I mean, Nova. I think no, I think Nova is being transferred over to being one a, a series on. Uh, Disney it Plus. is Disney Plus, yeah. It is. It and, just he said at least twenty twenty five, if not twenty twenty six. And and see now that they actually made money on their streaming uh, service, we might see them loosen up the uh, the purse strings a little bit, and we might get one or two more uh, series instead of two a year. There's supposed to be one more pre special presentation one as well. Yeah. Well, they we lost Colin. We'll wait till he comes back. Anyway, we'll talk about other things until he comes back. Speaking of Thanos snaps. Yeah. And Josh Brolin wants to come back. And, and the Thanos back snap Thanos. happened, and we, uh, we brought you back. Um, TVA. The, uh, <laughs> no, but Josh Brolin has already said, I want to come back. You know, he goes, it, whether it's Thanos or another character. And I was like, you know what? It's multiverse. You can do anything you want with it. I would love to see Josh Brolin as him. I loved him as Cable. Man, bring yeah, Cable that, in. Yeah, bring Dude, Cable yeah, back. Bring Cable, cable back. back. Yeah. And there's uh, so many more stories you can do, especially with Cable. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to talk about with this. I mean, as far as speculating, um, you know, I don't know. Um, we're supposed to be still getting Spider-Man stuff. With yeah, Sony but indeed. Sony Sony is really clamping down. I know they are. I know everything because you know, they see this movie here, Deadpool, really um, probably ignited made a them, fire under their fire under them. I mean, they're now seeing you know dollar signs, but yeah. they can't seem to do yeah. a decent. They can't. You, story. Know, you have Venom too with Carnage, and like he he does not anything like the character at all. He's not. There's no blood and guts and. They found a great people. actor form and everything. Yeah, they did. And he it was a shallow form of this awesome character we enjoyed from the comic and the 90s cartoon. That was strictly fan service, just so people could see it on screen. Uh, you know. And then look at this new one. I really want to go see it at the theater, but I'm like... What, Craven? No, the third... Oh, uh, oh, the, third, last third, yeah, the Last Dance. Yeah, the Last Dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I wanted to go see it, and I was like, but you know... They didn't follow through on any of their storylines. It's no. What's the point? I can just wait until I, I watch it on uh, at home. Yeah, and uh, that hurts. Uh, you know, a, a studio when they do this. You know, I'm waiting for Craven. Craven has been looks done. great. It looks, it looks really fantastic. Yeah. Rhino looks like he's going to be oh, like we should have had, which Sony gave us this giant robot. Mecha mechanical uh Paul Giovanni Rhinox version of uh yeah. Rhino. Are you and Tron? They can't... No, wait, wait, wrong, wrong cartoon. I, it's, I, to watch I think Spider Man it's... Fighter Row Beast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's like they've got something that they know is good, but they don't know how to fit it in the well, overall they're plan afraid. because I mean, this you... will definitely overshadow their their, their was other bad, uh Madam Web was bad, and then of course the Venom Two wasn't as great as it could have been, and so they're like, "Man, I don't know what we're gonna do with Wait, this." So, are you telling me that you believe that, that Sony is so used to pumping out absolute and utter garbage that somehow, like the the million monkeys slamming their hands against the typewriters, suddenly came out with something good, and now Sony's holding it, going, "What? What, it, what is this?" What, well, they thought it, they what, they thought Madam Web was gonna be good. They had a plan. They, had they, they were trying to build this universe around Spider-Man without Spider-Man. Uh -huh. You know, and now all that's gone out the window. Um, you've got to uh not Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire is supposed to be back in yes. Andrew Garfield is really pushing, pushing to finish his, his trilogy. trilogy. And then you've got who's who plays what's his name? Tom who Holland. Plays, Tom Holland. He's like, I'm getting old. I don't want to be wearing a spandex hanging upside down, you know, when I'm 40. Yeah, because they're waiting. They're waiting too long. I mean, I, I, yeah. you know, he, Vincent D'Onofrio is not going to be uh, in the in the age and, and shape to be Kingpin again if they don't 
they, they don't, don't hurry. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the thing. You have a good property, put something out steady. It doesn't have to be every two years. You can do one every three years and still keep a franchise going. But you wait too long, like they did with Indiana Jones, and then yeah. and you ruin that franchise, and nobody's going to follow through. You know, nobody's going to at least do principal photography, and say, okay, we're going to take our time, do the effects, the you know the post production stuff, and when then we'll have it in the queue, so that when if a COVID happens, we still have stuff out the pipeline. Well, we're fixing to have another strike. Yeah, that's, that's some that's of the them have already too. started. We're the yeah, actors. We're, the video game actors and voiceover yeah. actors are going on strike. Some of them have already struck on strike. And then yeah. some of them have signed individual contracts that allow them to work with the studio as long as their voice image and their, what do you call it? The, the likeness. Well, yeah. no, the blue, the green and blue screen work that they do. There's a name for that. Mocap they name. cannot, yeah, they cannot use that. As because what the studios are saying is, oh, that's just an image, that's just a body function, that's digital, you know, something it, it, it has nothing to do with the actor. That's a lie. Why do you put the actors in these suits if you're not actually wanting their performance on screen? You know, quit doing that, acknowledge this fact. We're gonna have to reconcile this at some point. Digital property is a person own themselves or does a studio that hired them and, and created their movies own them mm -hmm. i think you sign a contract just like they do with like superhero comics it's the family of you know with creators of superman and all these other they get a 10-year license and they pay them and then if they when time comes if they're profitable pay them a little bit more and you get the license back but if they're not go back and say hey look this isn't selling like we wanted we can't pay you this again, so let's renegotiate the contract. But we're in this position now where everybody wants to own everything. Well, because they don't want to pay out anything, because that's yeah. how you maximize profit, right? Yeah. Get get as get as much money in the door as you can, and prevent as much of it as uh, going out as you can, yeah. and hey, maximize profit. And then you have companies laying off employees left and right at video game companies which is another topic of another episode at some point because i mean at this point we're going to have no games we're going to have no movies uh other than things that have been in the pipeline for for a while that just been shelved because people aren't sure if they want to release it yet um we had a lot of that during covid so yeah um but this movie was definitely a breath of fresh air i mean it was much needed out of all the films we got this year i mean look i love godzilla x kong um and the uh kingdom of the planet of the apes was amazing but we needed something that was a comic book film that showed the studios and the audience that this can be done that again. you can have character yes again <laughs> Like but, they had they they had the formula and then they just kind of decided to start tweaking it a, a little too much. But with well, think about the the implementation of the fact of the X Men, this was like literally taking the comic and just putting it on screen. I mean, versus like what we had gotten in the past, where they they couldn't fully commit. You know, no. I never I never wanted to watch biker X Men from Mars. You know. I, you know me from day one. I, know. I was like, I, "What? Why? Why do they look like?" Why they put them all black? Yeah, I know because yellow and, doesn't look and, good and on leather. Street. Man, well, I, they look like you know. I want to. I want to get the that disco time, later. I want to get that time machine, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to Brian Singer. And I'm gonna go look. This is what this should look like, Dick Wad. And then you should uh, just slap. You just go slap him. And go no, no. Just hit him a couple times on his newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he screwed up Superman too. I mean, yes, he did. Kryptonite Island, yes, let's go. And God, I can't get over that, man. I can't get over I'm the not, whole my baby's daddy's mom. Yeah, I can't get over the baby thing too. It's just like <laughs> I remember, I still remember being in the theater and David and, and Gus we were, on either we side of me. To walk and out. they were like, and I was like, if 
they make him Superman's kid, I'm walking out of here. Oh, no, no, they don't do that, Mr. Yudu. Just, just watch the film. <laughs> and boom, they did. I got up, and they both grabbed my arms and held me in the seat and held my arms down. They were like, you're going to finish watching this movie. I was like, no, no. And then, like, you, 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 the problem with that movie was you casted actors to play to play other other actors. actors. So it's like it's the whole phrase. I'm the dude playing the dude disguised as another dude, another which dude. is everybody's exactly. meaning what, right what now with Robert Downey Jr. So, um, and then like at the time, you know, we didn't know the allegations for Kevin Spacey and all that stuff. But like having him play freaking Lex would have been amazing. But he wasn't. Oh, they let him play Gene Lex Hackman. like he was. Instead yes. of having to mimic Gene, Gene Hackman's yes. role, he, I mean, the only other thing that could have been better was Clancy Brown. Oh, yeah. yeah coming in course. and playing him, you know? Yeah. I could have lived with Kevin Spacey if they'd given him that evil side of himself that he mm -hmm. could play very well, you know? And, you know, you have to be able to disconnect from somebody's body of work, their movies, whatever they create, and their personal lives. You know, what they do in their personal lives, they got to be held responsible for, especially if it hurts people. But that doesn't mean from that point on, all their work is garbage. Right. Contained especially when you were praising out. them and giving them Academy Awards. Acolytes, yeah. And Acolytes two months ago. No. Accolades and so, are... Acolytes. Yeah. That's okay. Acolytes are a totally different thing. I, Yeah, Acolytes is that uh, horrible, horrible show that we not, none of us watched. Yeah. Sorry. That does not exist in any of my headcanon at all for star wars um so they're you know the only like jedi wookie that i know is what what's his name from uh kotor the what well, he was not even a jedi but you know the your companion what was it david do you remember yeah. Yeah. oh man i, I have the figure want. too but you know um well i remember later. okay Go back and you reread the young jedi academy there is i a, know uh, i know well of yeah. course also reading the um the last the last 10 books of the um the old, star wars uh, before yeah. they the, uh before the crucible where luke goes on basically the odyssey and stuff to learn of the whole reason why his jedi students are going crazy with the uh, and turning turning to the dark side um that's a whole thing we can definitely do an episode talking about the lore of the the greatness of what star wars was not it is now I know Mazin's like Vince is about to rant about Star Wars. He's about to rant. No man, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna save it for another time. Yeah, we're uh, not gonna overshadow um, the greatness that was Deadpool. Yeah. Wolverine. Why 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 waste space on yes. on garbage when Deadpool and Wolverine, Wolverine was yes. was so good? It was so good. You know, studios take note. Just like man, just put people that love this stuff in charge and let it run. And and it's just it'll print you money. Good like, lord! Like How is it rant. that hard? And this yeah. saved and, and this saved Disney. This oh, film, did. this film, you did, or saved the MCU at Disney. Well, he if is this had Marvel failed, Jesus. Disney was going to be sold because there were a lot of different people, organizations, a lot of them international wanted, and were talking about trying to buy the franchise. And I was like, please, please don't do that. Please don't do it. Well, it's, um, it's also one of the things, too, though, that this saves Disney in a way that it is a wake-up call. This is how you tell a story that for existing canon that's been around for 60-plus years, like as far as comic books and the X-Men, I mean, when you have the source material... Just adapt it to a film. It tells itself. It's even got storyboards, which are called panels. Just take this stuff and give people what they want. Just that first few scenes with him going and trying to find the right Wolverine he needs to use was pure gold. These are these are versions of characters that we never thought that we would ever see on the screen. And they were represented so well. Yeah, and it's, it's not like, like you needed a whole movie for him. It's mm -hmm. like, look, just give it the time of day, right? Like, sh show it, right? Like, just yeah, just do it. Like, I don't understand this whole mentality of like we're going to make a product for people that don't care, and then like tell everybody else who has been funding 
them making yeah keeping it alive and spending the money and and making it profitable and then tell them to go you're going to tell them go yeah f off yeah it's just like come on guys you, you, that's not how you make money and that's why like my rant for the the whole gi joe thing i did previously i love this brand i don't want it to die but you're not doing anything to keep the fans driven in the product and expect them to stay when you keep shitting in their boxes you ship them or you don't even have the opportunity for them to purchase this stuff because it's already gone um i don't know I, Dif different episode different Hold episode on. definite episode. Well, check it out we, we will we will we'll, we'll come back we we'll will come burn back we will burn hasbro at the stake yeah later uh, i mean i've got to say though we're praising them right now and they did a good job and i Yes, and they did. Be fantasy, but I've seen previews for the new Captain America film, and I'm frightened. You know, and I'm wondering how long they're going to keep Harrison Ford in the Red Hulk. Thunderbolt Ross, before. It's because Until Thunderbolt, tonight. even though he was old, he was still tough. He was a fighter. He, you know, he kept in shape. I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid that Harrison Ford's going to run out, try to go downstairs, break a hip. And um, so, I don't know. I, I just and, and you know, to me, I, one thing I loved about the original Hulk movie that most people hated was Sam Elliott as Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah, he to me was the Thunderbolt Ross I remember from the comics. Comic. But then you got um, William Hurt. William Hurt. And then I, he grew on me, took a bit, right? But, you know, we lost him. He died, you know, tragically. And I think he would have been fantastic. But even he was getting older, you know. I so would have. Here's, here's a question then. Who would you have cast for him instead of Harrison Ford? I know in the trailer they do the whole thing. Why well, I, I shaved the mustache because of whatever reason. It's like, oh, yeah, this is a nod to. This is why he doesn't have the mustache. like he's like uh Don Cheeto replacing, yeah. Well, going back to Sam Elliott, yeah. Well, yeah, could have done that. Uh, I was thinking, you know, Jeff Bridges, maybe, but I know he's I, I, I don't know no, just because I, I of the fact, like, remember in White Squall, he had that sterner, yes, persona. But if you've seen the movies he's made now, and I know, I know, his I know. Health, you know, it's just like um, uh, Kirk Douglas's son, um, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas is getting old. Yeah, and both of them have fought cancer, and they're mm -hmm. recovering, and they look healthy, but they're just not that healthy anymore. Right. And um, even and, and so Michael Douglas said, "Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I can't keep doing this." He loved it, but he's just like, "I'm done." So at some point. You either write in the storyline since we've already made so many changes. You could have brought in Lawrence Talbot, who is was the original person who worked for Thunderbolt Ross, who hated Bruce Banner because he yeah. was in love with Betty. Built that up a little bit and let him be the new Red Hulk instead of, you know, I could have lived with him being Red Hulk versus, um, you know, they Ross. was playing him right now. Because they're making all kinds of changes for the uh, what are they the thunder uh, thunderbolts? thunderbolts yeah yeah now they had a really good Talbot on Agents of Shield yes yes he but they would have been good if they yeah. allowed him to make the come over if they'd yeah. done that I would have been on board with that because he was a really good Talbot I can't mm -hmm. remember his name but he was really really good um. David, you got anybody? You just you're you're okay with like the people we uh, talk. I hey, I, I, I know you're a DC guy. I, I yeah, mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I all I know, I, I all I know of, of Ross is the little bit that he pop, he'll pop up for quick to hey, I'm Thunderbolt Ross, blah blah, and then he'll go away. I'm like, oh okay, hey that yeah. guy, right? I just I, I I just find it funny that I mean I I'm I'm interested to see uh, how much of the storm. Because like the second that trailer dropped, I remembered everybody coming, or a whole contingent of people coming out of the woodwork and being like, "You recast him, but you didn't recast our boy T'Challa over here. Like, what are y'all doing?" 
Yeah, so, I understand that. No, that's because some characters, you know, Marvel wasn't going to recast anybody to play Iron Man when they could have, because there's somebody who personifies sometimes that that character is so them you can never see anybody else playing them. Yeah. So you have to give it maybe ten years, so that you have that kind of forgetfulness of the older fans in the yeah. in introducing it to the new fans. Well, you could have had um, a believable it, reason to like maybe like he gets disfigured or scarred or something, and you could have cast recast Shala as somebody else. But it's hard right. when you know Chadwick Boseman passed away and stuff, and that he he personified that character. He, and he and crushed. and I think I think really the big difference right is and kind of what you were talking about with Ross is that Thunderbolt Ross isn't isn't the face of a franchise or something like that, right? Right. He right. is. He, he he is side character B or whatever, right? He is oh, he yeah. is this villain of the week, right? He's he's this guy over here. He's not this guy, right? And I guess that's that's the in their mind that's the difference maker between the two. But mm -hmm. thing is, I just I just thought it interesting that that just caused that little minor firestorm whenever that initial uh, cap trailer dropped. And I can't help but think that the dig at the Wolverine thing there. I can't think to help that that's a dig at Harrison Ford. You, you know, they got to make him play until he's 90 because Harrison Ford's already 81. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm not, I love Harrison Ford. You know? exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing against him at all. Um, But it's like you definitely want to get somebody that maybe has a little bit more longevity to play the role. Because we, you know, you, you know, he can't do a whole lot of physical things. He got hurt on Force Awakens. He got hurt during Indiana Jones. And it's like, well, in, in fairness, your roles. In fairness, let's think about Marvel villains and their shelf life, right? In these movies. So, how long is he going to be around anyway? Or is he going to be biting the dust in this upcoming movie? Because that's a fair question. I mean, the, mortal the mortality rate of, of going up against the heroes is. You know, well, not... I mean, we kind of already know what's going to happen in this movie, but uh, we'll, 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 if they if they do, oh, it, I guess I've been I've been ignoring it too much. Uh, well, if they, if uh, they follow the comic, I mean, uh, well, I, I don't know how much of the comic they're going to follow, I but know. then what's his name? Stan uh, White uh, played uh, Bucky. Yeah, oh, that guy. Um, he was going to play play Luke. Yeah, which I was still hoping that was going to happen, but. No, we decided to he, go in a different he direction. Let, he let something slip. I was like, was last do, you know how like for a movie, sometimes they got to give you something, a tragedy or something to drive you to the theater to kind of give an impact, especially when you don't have a decent story enough to carry it. Right. I think he might not make it through the film. Oh, they're going to, are they going to pull a, uh, well, it's either this one or it's going to be, Thunder, I, I, gonna or it's gonna be the Thunder Thunderbolts because both of them, he's in both, but he said that he knows what's happening going to happen to his character and he That's talked about it. So that that was a lot of you know. Well, cool, so they're gonna, they gonna pull a Jazz. Are they gonna they're gonna have Megatron rip Jazz in half? So just like uh, so uh, Red Hulk. We didn't. Like, we didn't even get to. I want a piece jazz. of you, Megatron. But that was shouldn't have been. God, we're going back to the whole ranting about. Stupid no, and and movies. we didn't even get to. You know, the, we don't even get to to know half the characters before no, they're Transformers. killed off in the Transformers. I they're know. just all cannon fodder, man. They yeah. look pretty and then die. No, they didn't look pretty. It was like. That was a joke. It I know. I'm just like I'm. I'm gonna go into a rant here because I can't stand the. You're just movies. biting. You just want to attack some. I do. I'm angry. I'm a fan, and I hate this stuff. It's it's awful. Anyway, but we uh, love. You know who got multiverse Wolverine. right? Yeah. We huh? need to get him a chew toy. You know who got the multiverse right? Who? DC animated. With yes, they did. The Which is where we're gonna go next in the next episode. Um. So stay tuned, folks. But. Anything last thoughts, guys? I know we're now getting into the point of uh, we're past the review of the film, um, but I enjoyed it. I'd say go see it if you haven't already. How many times have you seen it? Please let us know. Uh, this is were one of you those the ones. one who pushed it over a billion. Yeah, yeah. How much are your money included into that billion dollars? Since it hit a billion, shouldn't they send us all a Wolverine 
giant mouth a uh, bucket. bucket. Yeah, a celebratory yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wolverine blowjob bucket. That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it. No, I didn't do it. But David goes, Me, I'll jump off that in. Okay, so is that fit fit for the Hulk anyway? All right, folks. Uh, that's it for this episode. We really oh, hope wait, you enjoyed. Wait, 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 wait. The, the Hulk gloves. <laughs> the Hulk, oh, the Hulk hands? Just... <laughs> the Hulk hands. Yes, oh, yes. no. <laughs> no. Like, I'll never think of those two ways again. No. So, actually, <laughs> anybody in the audience who's listening to this episode, please tell me if you had the Hulk hands. I know we had a set. Just don't tell us if you're working around the house. The going, Deadpool described. Smash the baby. Hulk smash. <laughs> Focus on your. <laughs> hey, hey, we can make bad jokes just as much. I as needed, as I needed that laugh so bad. Yeah. <laughs> So that would be the whole thing, right? You would uh, use the bucket and the hands. Anyway, all right. Okay. Good night, people. Good night, everybody. <laughs> all right, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for hanging out and checking out. Uh, let us know if you what your thoughts of the film were, how many times you've seen it, and did you use the Hulk hands? Peace out. Peace out. Don't get a Borderlands bucket. Yeah. <laughs>